Hello everyone and welcome back to my Warhammer 40k guides. I am Brady and today I will be bringing you part 2 of my Weapons of the Imperium guide. This video is for newer players that don't necessarily know how to load out their units because they are unsure how to use the weapons or what their intended use is for. But I also may have some tips for you veterans too, so I recommend sticking around. In this part of the series we will be going over most of the melee weapons that the Imperium has access to. So without any more delay, let's get into the content of this video. Chainswords, the basic melee weapon of the Imperium. You get plus one attack for having this weapon in the fight phase. Some people are confused by this and think that you have to use the chainsword in order to get that attack, but you don't. For example, you can have a Chaos Lord with a chainsword and a power sword. You can allocate all of his base attacks to use on the power sword and he still gets one extra attack with the chainsword profile because of the chainsword's ability. To get into what the chainsword is good at, well, not much really. It's basically the melee version of the bolt gun, or last gun depending on what army is using it because guardsmen are weaker than marines. The only optimal time to have a chainsword on a model is when you have a character whose only purpose is to buff your other units with auras. You don't want to over upgrade that character because you're probably not going to use him in combat since he's just buffing your gun line. And if anyone gets close enough for him to fight in combat that means your gun line is probably in shambles and he won't win you the game by himself at that point. So for buff manders, which are buffing commanders, or commanders that buff, you don't want to over upgrade them since their only purpose is to stand around and buff other things. So in that case, you would give them a chainsword and pistol for the cheapest loadout possible. Power swords. This is your anti-infantry, although it's not the best anti-infantry because it's still only strength user. So in the hands of a guardsman, you are wounding marines on fives. They are still relatively cheap and are okay on characters if you plan on actually fighting with them, although I'd take other options that I will get into in a bit. The only time I give a character a power sword is for fluff reasons or because I don't have the points or models to upgrade to something better. If you have a character that's strength 5 base, then the power sword becomes much better though. Power Axe, the go-to melee weapon on characters, at least for me. It's pretty decent anti-infantry on characters with a lot of attacks like a captain. It gives you plus one strength, meaning you will wound most infantries on three pluses, and it's minus two AP, which cuts through a good chunk of their save. I believe the axe is only one point more than the power sword, so I would take it always over the power sword if I had models and points for it. Power Maul. The Power Maul sounds good when you look at the stats, but because of the way the wound chart works in 8th edition, it's not as good compared to the power axe. The extra plus one strength doesn't really make a difference except for when fighting toughness six things. But you don't want to be fighting Toughness 6 units with a Power Maul anyways. There are better suited weapons for that, and we'll eventually get into those. So because of the way the wound chart works, the Power Maul falls behind both the Power Axe and the Power Sword. Power Fist, the anti-terminator weapon. It's good against mid-toughness units and okay against high-toughness units. You get minus 1 to hit when swinging with it, but it doubles the user's strength, which means a Marine swings at strength 8. This means a Marine can actually hurt a tank in close combat. It's also minus 3 AP, which cuts through almost everything in the game, and does D3 damage, which is good against vehicles and monsters who have multiple wounds. They're almost anti-tank weapons, but are better at mid-range damage, and better suited for killing things with 2 or 3 wounds. Chain Fist, the closest thing to anti-tank the Imperium has in close combat. It's basically a power fist, but with minus 4 AP instead of minus 3, it means it will cut through almost every vehicle's armor completely except for a land raider. And it does a flat 3 damage, making it more consistent when trying to kill vehicles with it. Lightning Claws, probably my favorite melee weapons. These are best suited for anti-infantry, but are okay, not optimal, but okay against high toughness units because they can reroll all failed wounds. They also give plus 1 attack to anyone using 2 claws, which is good and also has minus 2 AP which is pretty decent against most stuff in the game. If you want some melee veterans, then equipping claws is the best way to go about it because the amount of attacks and re-rolling wounds will just do a good job. That unit wouldn't be the best for competitive games, but sometimes it's fun to mess around with close combat stuff. So that's going to be it for the melee weapon guide. I know there are a lot more melee weapons out there, but it would take forever to cover them all. But after watching this video, you can probably figure out any weapons intended use if you compare it to the stats off of these weapons. Another thing to keep in mind is that I don't recommend making any melee centric armies unless you're playing demons or orcs. It's okay to have a couple of melee units, but in a competitive game, bringing a knife to a gunfight is never a smart idea. Keep melee stuff in casual non-competitive games and use mostly shooting units for your tournaments and competitive play. 
Well, anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Happy Wargaming.